All right. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming uh, tonight. We're going to be drawing Psylocke. Um, so, yeah, pretty excited about this. Phone. You lost your... It's right here. Phone? The phone? Oh, your phone. phone. Okay. Phone. I thought you said... Anyway. Now you guys can listen to me breathe. <laughs> right. So, tonight we're drawing Psylocke. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just get start, please. You got to stop. Oh, I see my phone. It's at your feet. <laughs> the phone is at your feet, Dave. Oh, is it? Oh, here. I'll throw it to you. There you go. Good. So, uh, right. Here we go. All right. It's not a Monday night without my tape on phone. So I saw Tomac Art said I was supposed to draw my, or I was supposed to wear my Dragon Rage. Just hold on a minute while I get my You have a mute button. <laughs> <It's not laughs> uh, all right, here we go. <laughs> Tomic Art said I was supposed to wear my Dragon Rage uh, shirt, and I saw that Tomic. I'm gonna have to do it next week. It was we like I, there was no time to run up and grab it. Nobody's wearing a Dragon Rage shirt. Yeah, we both aren't wearing Dragon Rage. Oh, I'll wear it. Jimmy's gonna stop coming to the screen. Yeah, that's the thing. He, he's just gonna say, you know what? It's not oh, worth no, it. Oh no, he's a sucker. For is he? I don't know. Yes, he does. This. <laughs> it's all in good fun now. I mean, really, I wouldn't even know what to do if I finally got a shirt. <laughs> Anthony, Jesus, I saw it! I finally saw the intro! Oh, good. I hope it was all that you expected. I hope it lived up to the hype. And because I still haven't gotten around to integrating it properly... Uh, can we talk through it? I, I'm, yeah, you can, hear, <laughs> you can hear both of us through it if we're talking. And uh, I'm not sure how much of it actually plays because I hit go live, I hit the button, and then I have to go to the other program and hit play. Anyway. So, do you know what time it is? What time is it? It's eight o'clock, do you know what time it actually is? To my body? Oh, seven. My body tells me it's nine o'clock. Oh, now is it, should it be nine or yeah. seven? No, we went to call back. Jeez. So it was nine. Two days later and I can't remember. But now it's eight. Okay. So, we're going to wrap the stream up at 10. But it's going to feel like 11. But it's going to feel like 11, so just draw fast, Dave. <laughs> Do what I can. I'm not going to make it, people! <laughs> so I'm excited to be drawing Psylocke, actually. So I did Psylocke covers, it's a long time ago now. It would have been 2008, maybe? Anyway, a long time ago uh, for a Psylocke miniseries. And I still see them at conventions, which is really great. It's there are some things that I, I do that I just never really see again, and then some things I do, and it's always nice, you know. It's always nice when something gets remembered. So, and I've been a Psylocke fan for years, especially. Uh, so, uh, and I said this. I uh, okay. Here's the thing. You didn't do a layout. I did a layout. I'm afraid to move my camera because it cuts out. Um, and I drew it on the backing board, so, yeah. Not today, Henry. I'm sorry, Henry. Not today. Wizman, the Great Wizard, is here for his first live stream. Congratulations, and welcome. Welcome to the club. Uh... Leolo Comius King says, hey, this is my first stream here. What's up? And Tomic has apparently a test tomorrow that he's supposed to be studying for, but he isn't there. <clears throat> As a mom, Tomic, I cannot condone the fact that you're not studying, but I mean, I feel like when I met without you, so I'm kind of conflicted. Yeah. And apparently the audio is echoey. It's echoey. Maybe is it still echoey? Because I flipped this. Hopefully that helped. Let's see what we have here. Let me just check our settings really quickly. Apparently your audio is bad too. Right. You probably don't even have a mic set up. Hold on. Audio. We're set right. 
So if it's still equity, I don't know what to do with it. Sebastian Adrian Cruz says, Meredith Mike is on. Uh-oh. Turn on Meredith Mike, and you're on. Turn yours up a little bit. Mine, yours is at the top. Mine is almost at the top. And turn mine down a little bit then. I just turned yours up because somebody else thought that your mic wasn't on. Oh, it's a fiasco on Monday night. <laughs> Why would things run smoothly? Okay, so Meredith unplugged the mic. But I... Okay, that's great. I'm glad. Never touch anything. I need to figure out where it's plugged in. Oh, man. I may not be able to get it back. Okay, it's back. Are we sure it's back? No. No, it is sun. This thing is totally dead now. But I think, you know what, my, this mic here is on. Oh, this is such a disaster. I can't believe this just happened. I just pulled a little closer. I didn't know. I know. Yeah, I don't know. These work. Yeah, it came back on. Okay. No, now it's off. There it's on. Okay, don't touch anything. Okay. No, 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 not yet. Because I still need to set. Oh. Okay. Do we have sound? Yes. We do. Do we have sound? We're, yes. <laughs> Everybody's like, says, just look at the chat, Dave. Sebastian says, as a com as a computer technician, I'm the uh, best comic artist. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm drawing. scrolling down. This was a fiasco. Why would it ever go well? You know what? It's going well now. All right. The answer to that, am I caffeinated, Matthew, is no. So... Wake me up when it's over. Antoine Washington has a super chat for four nine nine. Antoine says football and drawing is what Mondays are for. Glad to be with you all today. Happy Monday, David Meredith. Hope you all had a great weekend. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you very much. And uh, you know, for sticking with us through our weekly, our weekly, our weekly technical fiasco. Everything. Please, for those uh, of for you Christmas, that... I'm getting you a new roadcaster. Yeah. I don't even care. For those of you that are here. For the first time, this happens literally every week. It really does. Dave. What, what, what? I just saw Richard M8422 say, wouldn't it be great if Dave hit 200K tonight? And you know what I see? What? You're at 199,000 subscribers. How close are you to 200K? Do you know what that means? What's that mean? Next week, you're riding a horse. And we got to shoot some chicken footage. Uh, great. It's been a good week for me. I mean, I'm, Antoine, it's been great. Next weekend's going to be even better. I'm, I'm thrilled. To see I'm going to put Dave on the big boy. <laughs> we almost hit 200. It's, it's great. And thank you. But yeah, not thrilled to be riding a horse. <coughs> Next week will be the week when... I come up with some kind of an injury. As long as it's not your left hand, we're fine. Just a uh, can't ride a horse related injury. All right. <clears throat> Mikhail Church says a 200 K, uh, uh, 200 K sub stream. Yes. Why don't you let me do the hosting? There, you baby? do it. Thank you. All right. Sorry. Joshua Llewellyn has a super chat for $5. Joshua says, David, your perspective hacks video was awesome. And just what I needed this past week. 
Did you get a chance to listen to Spirit Box yet? Not yet. I, you know what? It's been, and I've got it written down right here. It's been such a busy week. I I still haven't watched UFC this past weekend. I did watch um, uh, F1. Uh, so I watched Ricardo hold off uh, Bottas, which was great. And you know what? Uh, I'm a fan of them both, but Ricardo's my favorite, so pretty happy uh but yeah I, I have some movies i still have to watch it uh, we had uh uh oh i had a, a thing all saturday and then a dinner for that thing saturday night and then sunday we did a uh a charity convention just a, a really small one in windsor here uh and so that was that was our day and then meredith had her her pony club which oh well, it's isaac's Isaac's right. Anyway, Isaac's our youngest, uh, his pony club. And anyway, so I went to that too. I don't know what I was thinking with that, but, um, yeah, it was fine. Oh, stop it. You had fun. I had a good time. So it's funny that, um, we just had the comment about how helpful your stream was because oh, yeah. your mother texted me this morning and she said, Hey, Meredith, I asked Dave to check and buy me a book on composition. But I watched his video as well as others, and I'll just go with that and experiment myself. So no book. Oh man, that's... So don't buy your mom a book, because she's watching your videos too. Your I need to talk to her. That's more of a way of saying, I didn't get back to her. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, and yeah, thank you. Um, but your mom's watching your videos and learning. Which is very so nice. So you know? that's kind of nice. You guys are all part of the mom club. Yeah, thank you with the perspective video. I was very worried about that one. Um, it, it's, it was it was long. Uh, I drew some really, really ugly stuff in the beginning because I, I can't draw tight perspective fast. Uh, I don't know if there's some, I'm sure there's somebody that can do it much faster and better, but that's as, as well as I can do it that fast. And I didn't want to make the video really long. So, but... I tried to pack in everything that I, not hard knowledge in the sense that, you know, all the stuff you can get anywhere. I said this in the video too, um, but uh, tricks that I, I learned over the years to try and, you know, overcome my own uh, limitations and especially not just, I think our arm's too big, not just uh, limitations, but also just time constraints. There are some things that, yeah, I know how to do it, but uh, the time that it takes to, for instance, measuring out uh, distances, you have poles going into the into the horizon, and they're evenly set. And you can measure that and make it perfect. I don't have time. Nobody does drawing a comic. Uh, really, the only way to do that, if you really need it to be uh, very accurate and still meet a deadline, nowadays you can use 3D, which I tried to get in there too, just to a limited extent. Anyway, Chrism says, "Hey, Finch family, finally managed to join the live feed." I usually work late, but 3 a.m. in the Ukraine. And this time, I'll also join Meredith's yawning session. He's in the Ukraine? Yeah. Very cool. And according to Simon Says, our work, I'm too loud. I turned down my mic. Hopefully okay. hopefully that works, Simon. I tend to be a projector of the voice. And uh, Yeah, I tend to be more of a mumbler. So, so generally, my microphone is set higher, but we kind of start messing with it. So <coughs> you got it fixed. Huh? I turned it down. Yeah. And now I turned it down more. All right. Beavis and Butthead Clips says, first time attending a live chat. Happy to be here. Well, thank you for coming. Oh, dear. I'm already yawning that. See, it's 9 o'clock in my head. My body thinks it's 9 o'clock, so I'm already yawning. I almost fell asleep on the couch. You're lucky I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'd be floundering. I have done this myself. I'm just going to sleep here. It's been a long time. Yeah. Shh. I, I think the last time I did a stream on my own, it was maybe even last summer. And I mean, it, it was it was fine. Now I would have Eric help. Eric is here, by the way. We were going to. Sorry, help. I put the mic down to yawn. Eric Grove, moderator extraordinary. And also. Um, I'm not laughing at the extraordinaire because Eric is, but <laughs> yeah. I'm laughing at the 
My sometimes I can't stop yawning. We I want to show you guys this. We did a um, uh, a tonal picture uh, last weekend, and I went to the store. I got some Copic markers. They didn't have anything past a five, so I couldn't go very dark. So to go darker, I use colored pencil. So it's much grainier than it would be if it was just Copics. Uh, and also, I'm kind of learning. But yeah, Eric has this thing really perfected, so he's kind of running me through it. Is it Copic it. or Copic? Copic, I don't know. So I've been Copic, whatever. But we're going to be doing a stream with this uh, very, very soon. We were actually going to do it last night. Um, Meredith shut me down because we had the Pony Club meeting. So hopefully tomorrow we can get together. All right. Time for ink. Here we go. All right. Time for a super chat from Shrunk for $5. You are a fantastic artist, my friend. Oh. Big fan of your stuff. Thank you very, very much. There are so many incredible artists and, you know, um, in the 50s, the 60s, and, you know, before then, even 70s, uh, to a certain extent, you really needed to, I'd say the 60s, you really needed to be in New York if you wanted to work in illustration. Um, it was very, very difficult because you needed to be able to physically bring your pages into the office. They would photograph them. How I, actually, to be honest with you, I don't even know how they did it back then. But uh, it, it was it was very localized. And when I got in, I'm in Canada. Uh, we could use FedEx, and I started working in a studio. But really, I could have also gotten in just. Uh, and and FedEx my my work, and so things got much more uh, international long before I got in, and uh, now we are so much more international. Uh, really, people from all around the world. So the quality, just in general, in in comics and illustration in, in general. I mean, you see it everywhere. is is incredible nowadays. So uh, I'm very, you know, grateful to still able to have a job and, and keep doing what I love and, you know, uh, keep fighting to be as, as good as I can because there's a lot of great artists out there. We have a super chat from Roma Wusirika. Ro I, and I only pronounce that correctly, I believe, because Roma sent me the pronunciation, which is <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Roma says, sending some support to get Meredith a new mic. Thank you for your super chat for $5. Yes, oh thank God. you. I do need a new mic. We need a whole new setup. When you use it as often as we do, or yeah. Dave does, I think things do just wear out. Well, they shouldn't wear out this fast. Well, you know, nothing mm -hmm. gets made like it used to. It's not like Maytag, where my parents used my great-grandmother's Maytag washer and dryer. And you know what? Even Maytag doesn't make Maytags like that anymore. Roadcaster that I use that keeps breaking on me. Um, I looked to, you know, is this something that's happening to a lot of people? I did see that it's happening, but it's very, very rare. Um, everything that I read, like it's, it's a great thing. Every once in a while, you just, you know, it, you it get a dud. I got a lemon. You got yours. It was made on a Friday afternoon, right? So you know what? If nothing else, like I'm, I'm not worried about buying another one. It's going to happen again. I, I think it's a real rarity. It's just happening. JDSCT has a super chat for $5. Hey, Dave, didn't realize you watch F1. Do you think Verstappen can hold on and win the championship? I think that uh, they're in Brazil next weekend. And actually, I think they've got a race the next three weeks in a row. Am I right? They've got four more races now. And uh, the next few, all the experts keep saying that it favors Verstappen. So basically... For all of you guys, and I know that's like 99% of you guys that don't follow, the two big teams are Mercedes and Red Bull. And Verstappen is Red Bull. Hamilton uh, is is uh, Mercedes, along with Bottas, for the last year. He's moving on. And uh, Hamilton, uh, Lewis Hamilton has been, a, I think he's a six-time or seven-time, I think seven-time champion. Um, one of the greatest of all time. And this is his first real challenge in quite some time. So it's very exciting. And yes, I, if I had to bet, I would say I think that uh, Verstappen's going to get it this time. Cool. Michael Johnson Curry has a super chat for 499 
Michael wants to know, Dave, is there any reason to the random straps on Psylocke or is there a design reason to them? Peeps love her design. Just curious why. Minus the obvious hot Asian ninja. Um, well, I didn't design it. That was Jim Lee. And I don't know. Jim would know. Jim would know. About, you know. I personally think it looks really cool. I think we can all agree on that. costume design. And I think that that's a good enough reason. I don't know if you would say that. If you asked what? Jim Lee, if you would just say, you know what? It looks cool. Well, I, Jim but, has designed a ton of costumes. Like yes. that's what he, every time they have a new costume, Jim designs it. Well, I got a, in my opinion and not just my opinion. I think if you had a poll, I would think most people's opinion. Um, Jim Lee's X-Men designs and he did quite a few. I think he really kind of redesigned all of them. Those are the classic X-Men designs, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Psylocke, um, Rogue, he, he designed uh, Gambit. That was his design. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Silence. Silence is golden, except when it's a live stream, and then all you're thinking is somebody say something. <laughs> I can't speak and read the chat at the same time. And I can talk and draw, but what happens is I'm you so used to you doing it that I kind of. I just they're two different talking and drawing are two different sides of the brain. They are. So it's not that's why you hard. can like sit there on the phone and doodle or doodle talking, right. even listening and drawing. You can listen to somebody speak and yeah. doodle and still retain what they said. But it's you can't talk and read at the same time or it, maybe some people can. And I'm just not that talented. Fair enough. Not there's talented. always there's always someone. There's always someone. Rodrigo Bezerra says, hi, Dave and Mare. As a child, I dreamed about becoming a comic book artist, but my parents were all, how cute he draws, must be an architect. Fast forward, forward 30 years, I'm an architect. How is it for you guys? <laughs> I'm a high school dropout, so that made my choices easier. <laughs> you know, I had, I had this or nothing, really. Um, I, I actually, when I was in high school, I, I thought I'd love to be an architect. Um, and I, I took a drafting class and I actually really, really enjoyed parts of it. I loved drawing the buildings. I did not love the measuring and I did not love the math. And I realized actually pretty quickly, and, and this is the problem for me is uh, my, my skill set as a human being is limited. So I, I could. You're a genius in some respects. Uh, yeah, well, genius, literally, I don't know about that, but I can do some things. A genius. What I can't do is anything else, and and definitely math. So I couldn't have done architecture, but I, I really envy it. I mean, um, it's such a creative, artistic field, but you you have to not just be able to visualize it, but actually make it real and make it work. And it's it's very. It feels like magic to me. I think you know skills like that are very, very impressive. I'm not feeling very good about one Mighty R's psychic powers. Mighty says, I predict Meredith will yawn after Book of the Week. I'm psychic. <laughs> Meredith's already been yawning, Mighty. <laughs> this is not, you know, we need more. Yeah. Like, Meredith's going to get up tomorrow and she's going to have eggs for breakfast, but I have eggs most days for breakfast. I feel like a farmer. I have my bacon and eggs. Timothy Voita. I don't know if I said that properly, properly, Timothy, but has a super chat for $10 with a little emoji that says number one fan. And I can do the like action for you, Dave. Number one fan. <laughs> Thank you very much, Timothy. I really appreciate it. You guys wish I was on video right now. Well, maybe. You don't because I look tired. Actually, I had a meeting on uh, for Pony Club last week, and everybody does like Zoom or whatever the Google Meets. Mm -hmm. And the first thing they one of the other uh, Pony Club members was like, "Don't take this the wrong way, but you look tired." 
<laughs> I'm always tired. It's a risky thing to say to a woman because, yeah. Ah, she's a woman. But, and yeah. she was like, I truly don't mean to offend you. Right. And I looked at myself. I was like, I do look tired. Everett said to me the other day because I had makeup on. He's like, are you wearing makeup? Like, why? Yes, I am. Why I think you you're okay to say tired. You just want to avoid. Haggard. Like, <laughs> right. Sick. <laughs> That's exactly what I was. Haggard. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. Gonna have to start wearing more makeup. I mean, nobody needs a trowel every morning, though. Accidental Genius wants to know if you can demonstrate how to draw obliques. To me, it's kind of confusing. And okay. die here to Michael G says, great female pose. Thank you. Okay, so obliques. Um, trying to remember what obliques are. <laughs> Okay, so so what I'm going to do, I've got her arm raised. I'm going to raise this arm uh, up like this, and I'm going to be obviously pretty loose just because we don't have too much time. But here's my my chest. Because Mary's going to fall shoulder, asleep. My, my bicep. Okay, and let me clean this just a little bit. And so uh, I've got my rib cage here. I'm just going to draw it as, as just a shape right now, uh, just to get that in there. Um, just get the contour, the center of my, my chest here, and my back is going to contour basically like this. Now, um, I've got my, my bicep. There's a little muscle that indents here, and then you've got your tricep here, and your... Um, your lat connects inside. This is the front of my deltoid. I'll clean this up a little bit more again. This is the front, and you can see the back peeking out here. And your lat actually uh, joins inside here and kind of connects. Here's my stomach. Uh, connects into the stomach. You've got your. Is that an oblique? I can't remember. They're the side muscles. Your side muscles. You've got this muscle here, and it connects. And then you have your um, serratus. And so I, you can draw those basically flat, line them up along this ridge here, and then connect them. And I give them a little bit of more of a, an interesting shape that's fairly... Um, I, I'm drawing these like this. When I'm drawing, though, I really like to... I'll draw this shape here, and then the next shape. I like to give it a little bit more um, character, so it's it's not just a flat shape like that. And here's where things get really interesting because when people talk about struggling to draw this area, I'm going to totally agree because your stomach kind of comes in here, and it it becomes such thin little muscles that learning the actual anatomy is not as useful as learning how to draw it. And so I'm trying to complete it here, but I don't really actually have the kind of understanding that I think you would like to have for exactly how all that works. I know, and it really this should actually come up a little higher here. Um, I know how I make it work and I, I know how I can light it, uh, but it is a very, very difficult area to, to get across. But knowing that you have your serratus coming all the way down and connecting in this kind of a pattern, like this kind of a pattern here, and then it comes all the way down into your, um, I think that might be an oblique. So people in the chat are like, come on, man. So, uh, yeah. And then your... Uh, pelvis is here, your buttocks are here. Uh, and so, yeah, I've learned how to draw this. Actually, this is kind of two muscles here like this. But really, this is this kind of thing here. There are areas on the body that are going to give you trouble just because they the easiest muscles to draw, like your bicep, is a nice big uh, shape. And then your uh, deltoid is a nice big shape. And so that makes those, those muscles really easy to draw, really easy to light. But then some of the smaller muscles like these things in here 
um, it can be very, very difficult. And it really comes down to, I'm gonna erase all this out and just to find in my edge here, I'm just gonna draw the connecting points here. Just get a little bit thicker here. Connect in my stomach. And you can see how I'm I'm basically just drawing some connections. And so it's it really is just thickening out those connections. And I'm not really worrying about exactly where does this muscle exactly go in real life, because the truth is I don't actually know. Uh, and I've learned this from other artists, especially. Um, and sometimes uh, uh, muscle magazines, that kind of thing. But yeah, an, an exact ruling on that. Um, it's one of those areas of the anatomy that, that uh, I don't know that anatomical books are, are helpful. All righty. Alfin says, yeah, I took mechanical engineering in college. Not for me. People are like math. It's like, it's a bad word. Well, Apparently there's like an over under betting on my yawns and coughs happening. <laughs> I see that happening on there. I see you guys like profiting off my have you fatigue. I don't think you have coughed yet. So. I have, I think I have coughed once. I think, I think, I think. This is, you know, one thing about having a YouTube channel and doing tutorials is it, it's, sometimes a little embarrassing just how much it exposes what you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happens when you go live. Johnny Fitz says he's not staying. He just wanted to say hi. Won't be around after today. Oh, maybe Johnny's going on vacay or going back to school. Well, hopefully thanks we'll see you again. Thanks. Don't point. never say never Johnny. Yeah. But thanks for coming by to say hi tonight. It's always nice to have people on the stream. Hello, Sid B. Um, Rodrigo Bezerra says, Dave, as far as I'm concerned, your landscapes and buildings beat most of young architecture students nowadays. You could become a great architect. And he would know because he is an architect. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. I, my biggest limitation when I draw, I tend to find, um, if I, not, if I need to draw three panels that are the same size, what I'll do is I'll draw, here's a panel. And I'll just do this. I'll use a pencil so I don't draw it on the page, but I'll just draw a little hash here and a little hash here to get my width. And I'll go over here and then just repeat it. And I'll do another one and I'll just repeat it. This is how I measure things without using, you know, math. So that's a limitation. Oh, other mind says I missed super chat and I did because my whole computer blipped, which I'm so sorry. I missed a bunch of super chats. So thank you for letting me know on mine. Okay. So I hate when my stream does that. Jamal Rashid has a super chat for 499. Hey guys, as you know, and see, it is so seating time. Hashtag may God bless you, your wife and the talent you share. God is good. Thank you so much, Jamal. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. God bless. And Other Minds has a super chat for $15.24. Howdy, Dave and Meredith. My first trip back to the flock since the stream started again. With traveling back, do you have any plans to visit the States? New York Comic Con was great. Yeah, I you're heard so do much about it. You're going to do conventions next year. Yes. Now, my concern right now has just been trying to get back and worries about being stuck. Uh, I think that we'll have that stuff sorted out. Um by next year and it, it should be, it should be fine. And, you know, one way or another, I need to go back. I'll go bonkers. Uh, I miss it. I haven't been to the States in ages and I'm so used to. Uh, I miss eating at nice restaurants. Yeah. We have a few here, but. Um, but know, variety, town. a variety. I miss like the thing about going to a different city is you get to eat at a different restaurant. Yeah. Well, New York, you really yeah. can just walk up and down the road and, and you we are do. hard pressed to find something. And we great. do. Okay. All right, oh. Allison McGlone has a super chat for four ninety nine. Allison says, "I know you feel Meredith. I've slept the majority of every day since Wednesday last week." Oh, Allison, I'm not gonna lie, that feels like heaven right now. <laughs> when I'm done building this barn, I'm gonna sleep for a week. I'm just gonna go to bed. I'm gonna like it's, Isaac's gonna need to go to school, and I'm just gonna call direction from the bed. Take your own breakfast and lunch today. It's time for the bus. 
<laughs> or maybe I'll go. just go from the bed to the couch. Maybe they'll just make me do it. That's what. Oh, that's probably what will happen. That's how it will go. Dave did laundry today. That's how neglectful I am right now. Yeah. He had to do his own laundry. Allison, thank you for the commiseration and the super chat. Danny Brown has a super chat for five dollars. Danny says, "I see you still don't have the tattoo artist grip tape for your pencil." Oh, we've got the tape. Yeah, it's upstairs. I don't know. Oh, you know what? It's the same as vet tape. It's like vet yeah. wrap. It's the same stuff. Yeah. You just, it's like asking a leopard to change his spots. He has a way of doing things and he won't change it. He won't do it. I don't want to say that I'm superstitious, but I know that's won't do it. an issue. I'm sorry. I can't find the brush that I've been using. So this one has hairs off of it. Not, sorry. I know that drives some people crazy. Rich Ware says, Dave Finch, you can blend Copics by running lighter hues over darker. Dark over light makes hard edge darks. Light over dark, smoother, softer blend. And you can layer a lighter one over and over. Yeah, thank you. I, I learned a little bit of that um, when Eric and I did it. Because Eric has been experimenting with it a lot. So he explained some of that to me. And, and basically what I did is I just kind of step by step followed what he was doing. Uh, and it worked great for me. I was very happy with how it came out. Um, you can always tell at least when I'm kind of happy because if I hated it, I would it would get memory hold at the end of it. No one would ever see it. He totally showed it because he wanted you guys to say, "Oh, look, look, look how good yeah. that is!" Yeah, totally. It's I so know. good. You don't have to point that out, but yes, that's totally why you I did was pretty it. happy with it. Varu Goat wants to know when you started drawing, Dave. Um, I started, I'm 49 now, which is, uh, you know, for the longest time I thought, you know, I'm still pretty young. I'm not young anymore. It's not young. But um, I started when I was 20. I drew a little bit, um, but really very little. Uh, and I, I really struggled with school. I struggled finding just kind of any place. And uh, I had I had done grade 10 twice. Um, I was six years into school and I hadn't finished grade 11. So I, I was really looking at, okay, I, I need to find something. And I was getting old enough. I think, it, you know, people mature at a different rate and I probably wasn't the fastest. So I finally got old enough. I was really thinking, you know what, I need to find a path in my life that can be satisfying and uh, that, um, and I didn't want a real job, you know? So um, my sister read comics and I started drawing and I just thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And uh, the minute I started, it, it just felt right. And uh, I, I mean, I had so far to go, I wasn't very good, but you know what it's like when you feel like, okay, you have like a handhold on it. Maybe it's not where it needs to be, but, you feel like you could get there. And I did. I felt like, okay, I could get there. And I mean, there's been a lot of heartache and pain and self-doubt and, you know, uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys all heartache. know. You don't know heartache. <laughs> it's, oh, I almost went into that song. Okay, thanks. So glad I didn't. You would anyway. Have to, you would have to pay. But yeah, I, I started late. Um, I remember when I started at Top Cow, uh, we all were about the same age. I was 22 when I first started getting work uh, and when I got my break at Top Cow. And um, we all were around the same age. And so many of the artists had been drawing, you know, for years and years. And they couldn't believe I started when I was 20, but we were all the same age. And I do believe that aside from some exceptions, because there are some, uh, Jay Lee is is a, a, a real exception. He started very young. Uh, another one, um, Joe Madden. Uh, was very very young i think he was working at marvel at 16. so but that's really unusual most people it seems like you kind of mature artistically around you know that age and um now that's not to say that if you miss that window because it really it doesn't mean anything that way i think it's just it, it can be more difficult for most people like if you're younger um I'm, i really i hate to give the advice of oh just you know uh, be patient because that's tough. I'm not very patient, but you do have to, to a certain extent and accept the fact that um, you develop with, with it. 
over the years. All right. Roy De La Cruz 8 has a super chat for $1.99. Roy says, you guys are the best. Love you so much also. Thank you so much, You're Roy. the best, Dave. No, Meredith. Yeah. I am. You're right. Thank you. That's what I do to Isaac all the time. Because he's like, I love you. I'm like, I love you too. He's like, I love you more. I'm like, yeah, probably. <laughs> Because, you know, we could do that all day long. That's what he wants. No, I love you more. No, I love you more. You can only do that 500 times, and then you come up with a new answer. Yeah. I need to be a little careful. It's coming on a little thick. I know if I go here, I'm going to end up picking that up with my fingers. Oh, my computer, my computer flipped again, so I got to make sure I go back. And get all the comments, scroll through so I don't miss anybody. Timothy Voita has a super chat for $10. Timothy says, any suggestions on learning anatomy, books? And thanks for tuning me, turning me on to Mike Massetti's force. Oh, yeah. I'm currently taking and enjoying his courses. Yeah, he's great. Um Uh, books for learning anatomy. I've got one actually, my book of the week, which is coming up in 20 minutes, 19 minutes. Uh, that's a great resource for it. Um, I learned from uh, Bridgman's Guide to Life Drawing. Uh, that was kind of my basis. And the reason why I feel like it's so important is because you need, you need landmarks and he's so good with that. Uh, just you you might need to refine areas. You know you don't like how he pulls, but he does something. He he's not a comic artist. He was uh, an illustrator, and so you, you know you need to make decisions. But it gives you a really good basis, and just he's very good with blocking forms, and I really really recommend that. And then from there, um, you can just look at life, and I see artists all the time say, you know, I learn from life. And that's how I got all my, you know, I, I got everything from life. And I look at their work and I can plainly see, you know, there's some Joe Mad there. I, I can see it. You know, that hand, it's a very Joe Mad hand, which is fine. I mean, you could do the same thing with mine, but, you know, I, I feel like you know, at least be honest about it because I don't think it's helpful to people trying to learn to not be honest about the fact that you're, you're looking at other artists. We all do it. And so, yeah, I really recommend that you look at artists that do it well. Um, Frank Frazetta is, I mean, Cannot do better than that. Um, Kevin Nolan is really great. And really, you have to kind of, uh, Alan Davis is phenomenal. Um, and then of uh, younger artists, um, I think Jorge Jimenez, who's doing Batman right now, is a, a, you really can't beat that as a, as a guide. And then, you know, experiment with the way that they're choosing to uh, interpret things. Like all the lats and uh, obliques and, and and that whole area, you'll find different artists will in, in, uh, interpret it in a different way. And that's really how I learned, which is why it's really difficult for me to say, okay, here's a definitive way how to do this because I picked it up from different artists because I found it so difficult to just find a definitive, um, a def definitive way. Anyway, yeah, I really recommend that you look at a different art. Okay. Russ H. Fam has a super chat for $1.99. Russ, I don't see a comment. So tag me if you had a comment or a question. <clears throat> Kenny Wang is going to sleep. Kenny, oh, no. I hate Kenny, I hate you right now. We're losing Kenny. Good night, Flock, David and Meredith. Please don't forget to like the stream. Oh, uh, he's in baby voice now. Uh, well, we'll miss you, Kenny. See you next week, Kenny. Roden Fast has a super chat for 20 reels. Roden says, Go! <laughs> Roden? Yep. Well, thank you very much, Roden. And a super chat from Tagmo Model Works for $5. Tag says, Want to say hi. Love the Betsy Braddock. Keep up the great work, both of you. Thank you very much, Tagmo. Always great to see you here. Yeah, the, well, I'm sure you guys all know this, but Psylocke was, was uh, well, and is Betsy Braddock, and she was, well, is, 
Captain Britain's sister. And she was, you know, an English girl. And then there was the storyline with, um, it was an X-Men storyline and it had uh, the Mandarin, not the movie Mandarin, the comic Mandarin. And uh, she uh, ended up with a very Asian look and it was so popular that she's Asian to this day, even though her origins are actually, you know, British, I guess, native British, you know? So, yeah. Mako Church has a super chat for $5. Mako says, hey, Dave, how do you know how much muscle to put in or define for a fat character like the blob? And thank you so much for the streams. That is a good question. And thank you. Um, you know what? Here, let me, let's talk about that. And by the way, she's not looking great. I need to fix this a little bit. Something's bugging me there. I might have to wipe that out. Okay. So, so, uh, here's his head. And if, if I just drew him as a blob, he would just look like a blob, but he needs to look strong. And so what I would do, Here's my, my chest shape. I'm still gonna give him a large chest and he's gonna have a large gut underneath it. And then for his arm, what I wanna do, I'm gonna round the back of it, but I still really wanna accentuate his bicep. I'm gonna give him a nice big thick off the, here, I need to move this down. Okay, elbow. I wanted to find some of these large muscle shapes because it still, it makes them look muscular. So even though you might not see uh, some of the stuff that I'm defining in, he needs to have some of it. And so here's his uh, deltoid chest. And I'm not gonna draw all the striations in his chest. He wouldn't have that. But I want his chest to be strong. I don't want it to just be soft. And, you know, here's his hand. So, yeah, I would go something like this, where it's uh, it's it's big shapes. I'm not drawing a lot of uh, striation kind of detail, but I do want those those big shapes in there, even though they're very kind of blunt and softened softened a bit. Uh, that's what really kind of sells that he's very very strong, but still very heavy. So that's how I would go about it. And I, that's a quickie, but. There you go. I move this without breaking my camera. Perfect. I need to replace. I really need to. Everybody replace agrees that, that you're really old at 49. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Just Thank kidding. You for everyone. Just kidding. 49 is too old to do anything. I think I heard somebody say that. You should just give up and die. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Time to walk into the trees and yeah, die. Walk away. Actually, some somebody said that I can't. I can't remember who it was. Sorry, I'm scrolling through. I'm too. I'm. I'm reading, but scrolling past it. The in the Eastern culture, we have, Western culture is a very different view of aging than Eastern culture. There, I think there's more respect in Eastern Eastern culture for uh, life for age. process, the age and wisdom. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know why that is. That you know we don't really have that here, and we should. Now that I'm getting older, I didn't yeah. feel that way when I was younger. Of course not, <laughs> Timothy. Oh, and now, Timothy, I hope I say it right again, because Timothy Voita just gave another $10 saying, here's some extra bucks because Meredith just floored me by pronouncing my last name correctly. So I hope I did it correctly this time, too. <laughs> Thank you very There's much, There's no Timothy. guaranteeing I can say everybody knows. I can't. They can't guarantee I'll say the same thing twice. And people are wigging out about the hairs on your pen. I know. I'm sorry. But, you know, I can't find the other one. And uh, so I... I this was sitting They're here. They're dying right now. Like, I know. The stream is dying. <laughs> it's rough. It's like everybody's like, just trim the hairs. <laughs> Navy Sharks has a super chat for $20. Navy Sharks says, hey, to all my fellow fluckers. And <laughs> Puck Zed has a super chat for $2. Have you seen or heard Ricardo Federici work? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's really great. Um, now, I hope that I'm remembering the right thing. 
<sighs> okay, I'm going to say that I think he's a painter, and I'm going to show that I might be wrong. So, Do you want me to Google it for you? Yes, because I know the name, and so I know I'll see it and go, oh, yeah, but. Hold on. While I'm doing this, do you guys ever have like a situation where you heard something and then like hurt it badly? And then while it's healing, you just repeatedly keep hurting it so that you get to a point you're like, it's never, ever going to heal. Because I dropped a board on my toe today. Can you imagine what toe I dropped a board on, Dave? You got to be kidding. Uh, yeah. I cannot like my toe on my left foot. I keep dropping stuff on it. I took Isaac's keyboard away and I did little, little did I know that the keyboard has a plug, not just the plug that plugs into the computer, but it also plugs into the keyboard. So I thought that cord was a hard cord, like hardwired into the keyboard. And I took his keyboard away and I went to put it away and oh, honk. It, the cord pulled out of the back of the keyboard and the keyboard landed directly, directly. Only place it landed on my toe. Ricardo Federici is an artist. Here's his artwork. Okay, Hold on. You're the worst. We hit images. Here you go. Oh, stretch. Yes. Yeah. And he, yeah, he is a painter and he is incredibly good. I know these are small. Sorry. Um, well, here, just take a look at this one. Is it bright enough? Yeah, you can see that. Yeah, he's really great. I don't know how he works exactly, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Okay. All right. And I think that, I, I do think that there are some videos of him working, actually. I say I don't know how he works. I have an idea. I, I think that you can find some videos of him working on, on YouTube and... Uh, um, He's one of those artists that uh, when you get good enough with painting, you just put down exactly what you want. And um, I find for me when I'm painting, it's such a struggle that that's a very difficult way for me to work because I'm just not getting the right tone down. It's, it's a mess. And so it's hard for me to emulate that. All right. Edgar Bobadilla has a super chat for 129 Mexican pesos. Master, what are your thoughts about digital drawing like the Wacom? Um, I, I think, first of all, I, I think it's it's great. I like working on paper and I like working on paper because number one, it's how I learned. I have control over the tools in a way that I like on paper. Also original art, I mean, it's a factor. So, you know, something you need to be aware is when you're working on the computer, you don't have original art to sell. Now, uh, that's always been kind of a concern. And, you know, I, I've talked to artists about that and it's been a debate like, you know, what's worth it and what's not. But nowadays publishers really want you to be inking your own work uh, for the most part. I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule, but it's um, very true in a lot of cases. And so, Working on the computer means that you can kind of do both at once, and it's a huge, huge advantage. There are, there are just so many advantages to working on the computer. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's great. I actually, I finally got my Wacom uh, tablet. It's finally here. It's just sitting on top of my computer right now, and I, I used it to do uh, some uh, cleanup. I, I had a, a cover that I had to turn in, and uh, uh, cleaning up uh, pencil lines and and you know smudges and that kind of thing on it. Uh, like I find my whiteout tends to leave a bit of a artifact, and so uh, for months I've been doing it all with um, with the mouse. <laughs> so yeah, I'm a big fan of the Wacom right now, and I did get a Wacom uh, only because I've heard of a Wacom and I didn't know what to buy, and so I just went with what I knew. And right. it, it's, by the way, it's, it's not a screen. It's just a tablet. So I'm drawing, you know, I'm looking at the screen drawing on a tablet. JDSCT has a super chat for $5. JD says, having a body of work such as yours, how do you deal with trying to keep things fresh 
on interiors and covers? Oh, you know, that is a really good question because it, it really is a, a problem. Um, bringing, bringing in new influences, you know, the, it's such a great thing when you find a technique to do something that you're happy with and you can make it work. But then, you know, by the 30th or 40th time you've done it, it starts to get stale and you'll actually get worse at it too. Um, and I, I compare it to handwriting a lot, but the fact is that uh, you'll notice that as people get older, their handwriting gets harder and harder to read and it gets more sloppy. Well, the same thing happens with art. If you don't bring in new influences and try different things, you'll just slowly get more sloppy and your quality will drop. And it's a real risk. And it's something that I've really put a lot of thought and study into, you know, what is it that makes some artists uh, improve or or maintain for years and years and years and some artists not because, you know, I'm not young. And it's actually something I've been worried about ever since I was young. And I I know that really the trick is, is to um, constantly be learning and constantly looking at new things. And so what I'll do is I'm constantly um, looking at different books and I'll look at um, Eduardo Rizzo is phenomenal at drawing backgrounds with really great uh, structured blacks and composition. And I'll pick up, maybe not that panel, but I'll pick up elements of how he used his shadow and put it into my own panel and I'll try it. And I'm always experimenting with that kind of thing. And I think that helps. And with poses, uh, you need to be looking at new artists and finding new things and, and just be open to trying different ways. And it, it can be, the folder is a little big. It can be, um, difficult because, you know, we, we all have, uh, only so much time. But I think it's it's worth the time devoting to, to learning. All right. Kevin Mandel is dying over your brush. <laughs> well, the brush is done. No more brush. All right. Next super chat comes from Samuel Reyes for $5. Samuel says, hi, Dave and Meredith. Dave, I want to start my own drawing stream. What kind of camera are you using? Uh, this one here that keeps covering my face. I'm, I don't have the best setup right now. This camera that I'm looking at uh, is set just a little bit high. I should be a little bit taller, but then my desk is too low. I need to fix that one. I keep meaning to. And then anyway, this one here is a Sony, not Sony. It's a Logitech Brio 4K. Uh, it's pretty cheap and it works really well and it's very light. So I just have it on, it's, it, I just got it in Amazon. It's just an articulated arm. So it didn't come with the camera. Uh, and I just set that on a base on my desk. It's not ideal because I can shake it like that, but it works really well. And the camera that I'm looking at is a Sony, I don't remember what, but it's the cheapest Sony that you can get that is a DSLR that you can hook up to your computer. And you still need actually a, a separate there's like a card that you use so the computer can translate the images. But uh, you know what, I'll say a lot of what I did for my setup, a lot of what I learned, I got from um, Alpha Gaming. He does stuff for Twitch, people that want to start a Twitch channel, which I was really thinking, that's actually what I was planning on doing when I started this whole thing, actually. And so I was watching his videos of how to get set up. And uh, yeah, it's a great channel. So yeah, give it a try, Alpha Gaming. And he's got, reviews, my, the way that I set up my camera, because I don't know how to set any of this stuff up. I just followed um, step by step exactly what he said to do is exactly what I did. And it worked fine. So yeah. Cool. True Omen has a super chat for 100 rubles. I think that's what RUB is. Best way to study and practice and learn anatomy in general. And in relation to perspective, love from Russia. Uh, thank you very much. That would be, is that, ru what's Russian? Ru ru rupees? Rubles. I want to say rubles. We could both be wrong. We're, we don't know. Russia is on my bucket list. I've got, I want to go to Japan. Well, you got to answer the question first. Oh, oh, the best way to say. Don't well, digress. We were just talking about that, though. Uh, the best way to study anatomy is uh, to get a good basis. Um, you need an anatomy book to understand where the muscles are. Then, um looking at Bridgman, I highly recommend because he's really great at blocking things 
and then looking at other artists, I recommend. Uh, because we're doing uh, cartooning and um, you need to learn how to solve your own problems visually and you will. But I personally think it's very foolish to be reinventing the wheel every time an artist learns uh, that's new. And I also know that no artist actually does that. Every artist ultimately that makes it um, has built what they, they know based on the work of other artists. And, and I feel like too many artists are not as honest about that as they should be. I think it's very detrimental to people trying to learn when they, you know, when you think, oh, you know, you need to completely do this on your own. You never look at anything and everything because I'm not looking at anything right now. Uh, and there are places where I'll end up paying the price for that too. And, you know, we were just talking about like, how do you grow? Well, the way for me to grow right now would be for me to find somebody that does like this kind of lighting on the chest really well and see if I can pick something up from that. And, you know, ideally, hopefully in, in drawing it and copying it, because rarely am I copying like for like, it's a different pose. So I have to, I have to work with it a little bit, but I pick up things. And then the next time I do it, I can now just incorporate that from my own head. And you need to just keep bringing that kind of stuff in. All right. Uh, you know what time it is? What time is it? Oh, nine o'clock. All right. Time for the book of the week. I'm too tired to Good. sing the song tonight, so I'm going to make up my own song tonight. And we do the book of the week tonight, singing my own song tonight. Good. Ooh. All right, so this week, um, this is slain by uh, Glenn Fabry. And I feel like I really have not talked about Glenn Fabry not just enough, but really at all. And he is such an incredible artist, an incredible painter. And this is one of his coolest books. This is a very early book from Glenn Fabry. He actually did a slain book before this was all black and white. This is painted um, and it's incredible. And I was talking about, you know, what to look at for anatomy. Well, uh, he is incredible at anatomy and you'll see so many well, here just open. By the way, this book is missing probably a third of the pages. So I used to have two copies of this. I don't know where one went. And this one, all the pages are falling out. I need to get another one. And it's, I think, I want to say in German, probably not Dutch. I don't know. Anyway, but look at that. It's absolutely stunning how great that figure is. And figures all throughout the book are like this. It's not just that one. And by the way, uh, is there a photo reference in there? I'm, I'm sure there's some, but that does not just look photographic. Uh, and, and all of that lighting, it's very difficult to find a, uh, a photograph that will give you that kind of light to dark definition that he does with his work, which is what makes it so incredibly useful for your own anatomy. I look at this stuff, um, actually it's been a little while and I should be looking at it more, but I've been looking at this book and other books of his for years. Uh, look at just all the anatomy in these figures here. Let me skip it. He's got some pretty crazy anatomy in some places too. There is, there are some like specific shots that I kind of want to find in here. Um, that one, I mean, look at that. I, I don't know where you would ever reference that. Uh, to be honest with you, I kind of think he probably didn't. I, and, you know, I don't know anybody that can do this sort of work the way that he can. So, you know, there's always that genius out there. And I think that this is what he does best. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. I mean, that leg looks incredible. And it's very translatable. You can draw that. I mean, you can see it's it's essentially a black and white drawing. It's tonal but it's totally usable. You can really translate this into your drawing very easily. Here's another figure here. Um, there are, that arm, I mean, look at how great that arm is. It looks amazing. And can you find a photograph of an arm that looks good like that? Sure, but getting that kind of perfect definition of lighting is very hard. Here's another one here. And uh, yeah, the entire book is, is uh, amazing. And unfortunately, probably some of the better pages, I'm, <laughs> they're just gone. You know, over the years, I've just lost them. Uh, but yeah, one of my favorite books. If you can find this, I'm not sure if it's in print or if it can be found, but um, if you can find it, I highly, highly recommend it. I love that arm. 
really looks incredible. So yeah, the whole book goes on and on. Toward the end, unfortunately, he ran into some deadline issues and there started to be other artists. So it kind of, it falls off at the end. Uh, still good, you know, but the stuff that I really wanted from the book was, was this. And so, yeah, this is um, slain. I can't read it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? I, well, it's slain the Horn God. I don't know what book it is. It's, I think, in Dutch, maybe. But, yeah, phenomenal book. So, there you go, Book of the Week. I'm sure you can find it. So you had the book, the book of the week tonight. The book, the book of the week tonight. The book, book, book of the week tonight. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you for that. I'm so far behind the super chat. And, and I there... had my work really cut out for me. Because that brush was so hairy and crappy, this whole picture is, is a bit of a mess. It's going to take me a bit to kind of hammer this back That's into right. some kind of shit. That's all right. I can catch up on the super chat. And there were quite a few jokes about toes, about toe puns. So, okay, why toes? Because I said I dro kept dropping something on my toe. Oh. Hold on. I'm going to see if I can find a few toe puns. Um. Call the tow truck, Sheldon Martin says. Sheldon, that's bad. He had a better one. I feel like somebody had a better one. Also, you're David Potter and the hairy brush pen. <laughs> yeah. uh, Ronald, Ronaldo Juliano Mata Jr. says, totally painful. <laughs> <laughs> making me cough yeah that's you cough more than i did you know what i i've been allergic lately yeah. well, we got the other it's cat a new cat it's a new cat yeah, everybody's allergic kevin mandevil i feel like someone else told me that story yesterday uh, so bad you guys are so bad all right back to super chats i want to groan i am groaning <laughs> Those are dad jokes. But uh, yeah, I couldn't have done it. Yeah. I'm no good with dad jokes. Brett like Jensen has a super chat for $5. For someone who's just starting, what are some of your most recommended resources? Um, George Bridgman's Guide to Life Drawing. Uh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by Stan Lee and John Buscema. There are other How to Draw Comics, the Marvel Way books. That's the one that I really recommend. It looks like a coloring book almost uh, and it can be a little bit you know you look at it and you think hey this is more geared for kids and in some ways it is actually but it is such because the foundation is simple it's it's deceptively com deceptively simple it's it's very complex you can go so far with it and it really is the foundation you know for everything that you do as an artist and so it's it's by far and away the most important thing uh to really get you know those basic things in but it's presented in a really simple, no-nonsense, non-pretentious way. I don't think it really gets better than that. So I'd really recommend uh, How to Draw Comics in Marvel Way. Um, I, there are great books on storytelling and composition. When you're just starting, I wouldn't worry about that. You really want to get your figures down. Figures are the toughest and most important. Like hands, for instance. People recognize, and or faces, people recognize those uh, very, very well. If you can't draw at all, you still can tell very quickly if a, a hand is poorly drawn or if a face is poorly drawn. So you really want to focus on that stuff first uh, and then worry about, you know, I think you kind of fan out from the, the most simple basics. So, uh, you know, for me, I didn't worry about backgrounds for a little while. It was entirely just trying to get figures working. And now, obviously, you... you you'll need to start worrying about backgrounds and some of those things before you perfect your figures because um you know in order to be a comic artist you need to be able to do it all but to start really work on your figures how to draw comics in marvel way uh and then uh, artists that do it really well uh what i would say what i always recommend and this isn't so much a resource but i mean this is using your own you don't need a resource for this i still think it is the most important part of, of drawing and i'm just going to do a quick i have a video on this but i'm going to do it for you guys because i'm you know just in case some of you haven't seen the video and this is just um um it was sketching 
what I call it, I don't know, sketching. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this figure here and I'm just gonna quickly, okay, so the chest is basically like this. My arm hole is here, but he's got a really extended forward. So I wanna bring that forward and the other one too. And my neck is about here. And so what I'm doing is I'm not worrying about any of the detail for this figure at all. I just wanna get that pose. And so here's my arm here. hand, my other arm. <coughs> and if I can capture this pose uh, well in just a couple of minutes or even under a minute, that's really the goal. I'm not worried about you know any kind of detail uh, accuracy, but what I do want to get, uh, I, that kind of looks like an arm. They, they look like arms. Like there's, there's a shape in there and that takes a little bit to get the hang of, being able to just really quickly throw out uh, shapes that have uh, a, a um, an anatomical feel that that look An correct. Anatomical. And thank you, anatomical feel. Yeah. So here is this like coming up here. He's got his. It starts. It starts getting a little confused because he's got this big boot here. But there's his foot. Oh, his other leg. I kind of almost missed it. Is up here. And he's got his foot like this. And so yeah, you just want to do thousands of these kinds of drawings. And it can actually be very therapeutic and relaxing. I really enjoy doing it. And you will learn so much about this, learning, you know, posing, proportion, um, and uh, and making your figures more fluid, and also how to draw, like for instance, an arm, you know, really simply and capture most of that shape that you need in order to be able to now you can put your actual anatomy on there and and tighten it up but i have most of what i want and it's just in a simple sketch and you get that by doing this so i really recommend that all right next super chat comes from this is why i'm behind on super chats it's not my fault it's dave's fault tom morris has a super chat for five dollars tom says weird wildlife alert our french bulldog caught a mouse today Whoa. Mama says, to be fair, the cat slowed it down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Big love, you guys. And the farm looks, I'm going to assume he said, was going to say great. Cause... So <laughs> thanks so much, yes, Tom. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can't imagine a bulldog catching a mouse. That's awesome. Well, a lot of those little dogs actually were bred to be like mousers and ratters and little really? terriers, right? The bulldog's not really a terrier. Kennedy Hair eighty eighty four has a super chat for a dollar. Kennedy, I don't see a comment, so tag me. Roy de la Cruz eight has a super chat for four nine nine. Roy says, "Sorry, I keep asking, but did you see my Conan cover? We did, and it was awesome, Roy. Thank you so much. For, sorry, we didn't get back to you on it, but it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You did a good job." And Tagmo Modelworks has a super chat for five dollars. Tag says, "I want to make Maris Day, so Wednesday is my birthday. I'll be old-ish." Well, I guess that means I have to sing Happy Birthday to Tag because he's been here since the beginning. So, Happy Birthday to you! Happy Birthday to you! Happy Birthday, dear Tag Tagmo Modelworks. Here since the beginning, happy birthday to you and many more. There you go. That's for you, Dave. You just loved it. I could tell. Every time. The voice of an angel. Greg L. Static Art has a super chat for $5. Greg says, hey, Dinam, just got off work. This looks great. Was looking forward to seeing your Psylocke. Thank you very much, Greg. And uh, yeah, I'm glad you're you're off of work. It was nice to be done. Oh. You know what? Dustin Hewitt says, "Sorry, I made everybody what I miss. Everything, Dustin. Everything you missed all it right. all. I needed to do some cleanup oh, here. And you know what? I haven't done yet. So you're not too late for this. It's that time of night where I say hit like and subscribe because Kenny's not here to chase you down. Kenny went to bed. Kenny went to bed. So." I was like number 482. Well, let, what like number were you? And if you haven't subscribed already, don't you want to see Dave on a horse? Don't you want to see Dave feeding chickens? There's only one way to do it. 
hit subscribe so we can get to 200,000. Who doesn't want to see someone feeding chickens? Uh, totally. We want to see you pick them up and put them in the coop to put them to bed. Right. I'm not getting on a horse. It's so you are. It's already been decided. I can't believe how much cleanup I have on this. I really made a mess of it. Well, and it's that brush. It was the. Everybody was telling you get out the nail clippers. Uh, you don't listen to the stream. Yeah. It's your fault. Next time. Kennedy Hair 84 has a super chat for $5. Kennedy says, hi, Dave. Could you give a quick lesson on how to draw? Drum roll wrist. Yeah. Sorry, I had a yawn. Okay. How to draw wrists. So, I'm just going to turn this over. <clears throat> so, uh, wrists. First of all, the most important thing, oh, well, I don't know, most important, but uh, the way that I'm going to start is I'm going to draw uh, a shape for my wrist. And this would be the lower forearm. Your forearm, you could basically divide into two. Um, and you have your upper forearm that connects into your upper arm. And then your lower forearm is basically like a, a flattened uh, cylinder. You know what I mean? Totally flat. But that's an important thing to remember right there. It's not a circle. And I think we all know that. But an important one to point out there. And then uh, the next most important thing is that, and I, I find this all the time, it's very easy. And so I, I'm drawing this, you're looking down at the arm. Um, it's very easy to just draw the hand just directly on top of that wrist, just like that. But it's really not how it goes. The way that your wrist works is you have an extra piece. Uh, now, on my own wrist, I can make that straight. And you can see, you can see uh, I've got a wrinkle here, and then I've got wrinkles down my hand here. And so let me just draw that. So here would be the wrinkle on here. And then just going down, it would be like this. And then my hand actually connects uh, into that. And so it's a really important thing to bear in mind that your wrist really kind of flows down into your hand. And so when you bend your hand, and you can see as I bend my arm down, uh, I can flatten my hand. And it, there's like a, a flat kind of a plate there. And the wrist kind of connects at the top like this. So here's my wrist. Here's the flat of my hand. And then the wrist actually, and I've got that shape there. And so my thumb will come out here. And so it's really important to bear that in mind right there. And that makes a big difference and it makes it much easier to draw uh, wrists is understanding that you actually have a, a, a section here just like this. <clears throat> so um, I, I have a video on how to draw hands, and I did quite a bit on wrists in there. So maybe give that one a look too, and hopefully that can help. That's really kind of covers a lot of the problems that I see with with wrists commonly. So uh, I'm not sure how to take it further than that without really starting to go into detail. Yeah. Uh, and check it, out the video. Yeah, check out the video for sure. And thank you, Johnny D Gaming as a super chat for five dollars. Johnny D wants to know Dave Merritt. What was the first comic you ever read? Mine was Batman Death in the Family. I was five when I first read it. I was just like, no, Robin. Yeah, that's a long time ago now. With Mike Mignola covers. I don't know what the name of my first comic was, but I know there were romance comics that my mom and my sister had that were at my grandma's house. Right. Um, my first comic that really you know resonated for me and actually made me a comic fan was... Uh, the Phoenix Saga by um, Chris Claremont and John Byrne. That was a really big one for me. And it was it was an older comic at the time. I read it while I was 20, you know, when I, that was, what got me into comics, what made me want to draw was Mark Silvestri's art. Not because, I, I mean, I, I, I loved um, John Byrne's art. It was just so clean. I just, I, it didn't seem approachable to try. Uh, whereas Mark Silvestri was being inked by Dan Green. So it, it it was looser. It, it felt more approachable. Um, but yeah, that's that's the book for me. And that's why to this day, I'm still such a huge fan of X-Men. Simon says, our work says, I can't afford to super chat. So please, live commentators, what is the most beautiful thing that you have seen today? 
Dave? Uh, my lovely wife. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. You're, you're the best. I think just looking at my hay field, looking out the door, the front door or the back door and not seeing mud, just seeing like an ocean of green, a sea of green. That's very nice. Most beautiful thing I saw today. It's so pretty. The amount of work I'm having to do on this thing to fix it right now. <laughs> not good. Ooh, don't say that. How to draw comics.net has a super chat for $20. Always great seeing you put the drawing tips you teach into action, David. This is a gorgeous looking Psylocke. Completely agree on keeping your art fresh. So important. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Clayton. By the way, uh, and I'm sure you guys must know this, but how to draw comics.net uh, is a website, how to draw comics.net. So it's pretty easy to find. Uh, there's a lot of really, really great tutorial content on there. Uh, actually, I've got some stuff on there too. And um, they have a YouTube channel that you can find with a huge amount of incredible uh, content. We were actually just talking about it last week. They have, in my opinion, the very, very best video on proportion that you can find. So many other incredible videos. So, you know, I keep mentioning that one video because I, I was really amazed at how well it was described. But, and there are also um, some critique videos uh, that, I really recommend that you watch on, on the channel because uh, Clayton is an incredible uh, reviewer of other artists' work. I, I, that's a real skill. I find sometimes I feel like I have some really good insight and other times it can be a little more difficult. Um, and I think he's, he's really great at it. And I know for me, I learned so much from uh, critiques of other people's work, you know, not necessarily even just my own. And, you know, the nice thing about a critique of someone else's work is uh, it's easy to take in that critique without it's a natural tendency to kind of reject the critique. I know I can do that, but when it's not, you know, directed at you, you can learn from it and, and not feel like, you know, um, somebody's attacking your work, which is a really, really difficult thing. I mean, it's something we all need to get over if you want to show your work. And I know that's a challenge for some people too, but um, anyway, long story short, thank you very much. Daniel Allen has a super chat for $2. Daniel says, my sons heard you mention Farm Simulator. Yeah. And they made me buy it. <laughs> oh, it's great. Are you enjoying it as much as Dave is, Daniel? You're debating tonight if you're going to plant corn. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm not going to corn too. Okay, well, <laughs> Just do it. It costs too much money to plant corn. I don't have enough money because you have to buy the equipment. So I'm, I'm gearing up to it. I figure in a, in a week, I'll have enough money in the game to be able to get the corn equipment at the rate that I'm going. It's just a very therapeutic game. It's just, it's just fun. If you're the kind of person that likes cutting grass. Which you do, you cut it today. You, you weren't even, you shouldn't have even been cutting grass in places, but you just couldn't help yourself. You were cutting anything. You hadn't been on your lawnmower for three weeks. You're just looking for something, some kind of green blade to cut down with that thing. Yeah. Dan Genovese, Genovese, VC, I think. I don't know. Dan, it is what it is. I've known you this long. I had somebody pronounce my name as M A R D E T H. Dan's giving you the correct pronunciation. I know he, right? Dan like, has. I totally I, I'm know. tired yeah. tonight. Leave me alone. It's time change. Bear, and people are taunting me on the stream. They're saying, I'm going to bed now. They're just taunting me with it. <laughs> they're they, saying that they're going to bed? Yeah, they're like, see, ya, I'm going to bed now. Kenny Wang, I'm going to bed now. <laughs> Ban them. Ban them, Eric. Anyway, Dan is a super chat for Dar99. Dan says, Meredith, this one's for you. What's Pony Club like? Well, Dan, Pony Club is... <laughs> No, Pony Club is fun. It's it's a way for kids to learn about horses. So you get badges. It's kind of like Girl Guides and Brownies for horse lovers. So you get badges if you know parts of the horse. You get badges if you know parts of the saddle and the bridle. Um, and you can work up levels. So like your most basic level is a level E. And then you do a little testing. We have to write a test to prove your knowledge. And then they have... Like examiners come down from other cities and 
I mean, it's very serious. You have to be properly dressed. It's very British that way. So, but yeah, it's fun. It's good for Isaac. Very traditional. It's very traditional. It's about horse safety and I mean, more than just riding a horse, right? Learning about your horse. So that's, it's good. And I got roped into being the educational coordinator for the junior session. Kyle Wolf has a super chat for $5. Kyle says, hey, David, do you ever draw anything random persons? Do you ever draw any random persons like myself? I, I, I think that's what it means. LOL, I would love an X-Men piece. If so, how would I go about contacting you for one? Um, thank you very much, Kyle. I have a commission list. Um, I currently anyway, have a closed commission list. Yes, it, it is closed, and it's going to be a little while. I actually am still working on, um, as some of you guys will remember, I, I was working on a, a massive commission piece with like a ton of characters and everything. I'm still working on that. Uh, that needs to get finished. I've got a few things, and then we'll reopen it. When it does open, it will be through comicsketchart.com. Dot com? Comics? I want to say .net because now I'm thinking <laughs> how to draw comics.net. Sorry, Clayton. But yeah, comicsketchart.com uh, and they can let you know uh, how to go about it. It will be a little while though, unfortunately. Alessandro Kreppel has a super chat for five reels. Dave, your hips tutorial helps me a lot, I think. My drawings are better now. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. As you're an F1 fan, have you seen the Senna documentary? Uh, you know, I, I've seen so much with Senna. I don't think I've seen the documentary. I just watched uh, uh, Schumacher, and uh, obviously, you know, he had his his uh, rivalry with Senna, Ayrton Senna, and uh, um, you know, Senna's crash is is a part of that one. And I, I've I've seen so many things, you know, with Ayrton Senna. So. But no, so uh, I'm going to have to watch that one. I mean, he was an absolute legend. So he was uh, really the big legend just before Michael Schumacher started kind of coming on the scene. And um, they should have had a rivalry for a lot longer. It's very tragic. I just cha I'm changing my response to the most beautiful thing I've seen today. The most beautiful scene thing I've seen today was Kella Serena saying, Meredith, my hubby caved and went to bed already, but I'm still here holding out for you and waiting on the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> you go, Kella. I've been like, I've been in bed at night just listening to the washing machine going, just stay awake so you can put it in the dryer. Just stay awake so you can, or at least open the door so it doesn't stink in the morning. That's a, there's a mom tip for you. If you open the washer door, even if you don't get the clothes in the dryer, they won't, they won't end up smelling. They won't end up being so bad. Also, just always leave your washer door open so that it dries. That will help also keep your washer smelling cleaner and fresher. Mom tip 101. There you go. Thank you for that. Well, everybody needs a mom tip once in a while. Yeah, I could have used some you mom know, tips here and there. Here's a, here's a mom tip for you. Yeah. When you build a house and you put dirt, like lay like mounds of dirt to build up your grade, it takes time that dirt to settle so you can't drive your lawnmower over top of it and after it's rained until the dirt has settled otherwise you might get said lawnmower stuck and then need to pull it out of the dirt with the gator second but time not saying that happened to anybody today second time that's happened to me the first time earlier this year i got it stuck in a ditch we got to ditch all along, you know, the front and uh, I hate having to edge with a weed whacker. So I go as deep into that ditch as I can possibly go. I mean, I'm almost toppled and uh, yeah, well, I toppled and that was fun trying to drag out. <laughs> oh, the neighbors. Some days I think they must just sit on their front porch with their cup of coffee. He's got the lawnmower out again today, Lassie. Let's watch and see what he does now. 
Oh, Timothy Voida has a super chat for $5. Timothy says, David Merrith, what's your funniest convention story? <coughs> I got a few that I can't repeat here. <laughs> That's the problem. It's some of my the funniest ones. Are, yeah, there. I, I never go out at night anymore at conventions. I used to. You know, we'd we'd be out till four o'clock in the morning. And, you know, we partied up and we'd have a great time. Well, I'm getting oh older and gosh. I got to, I never do it anymore. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I definitely have some memories. I have memories of the first few conventions we went to. I'm like. Locking the door, dude. If you're not home by this time, don't be using your card because you won't be getting back in because you're out partying with all the buds. Yeah. Oh, how times have changed. Yeah, I just I can't do it anymore. But um, hmm. Atomic Art's going to get banned. Meredith, I got a pillow waiting just for me. And then he puts in a yawny face. <laughs> this is like 1030 at night for me, Atomic. My body is not adjusted. It's like running water when somebody has to go. Yeah. Um, geez, I'm trying to think of a funny story. Oh, yeah, you know, it's it's so hard to just come up with something on the, You go, Meredith. You're good with stories. Still, for me, the funniest convention story was the very first comic book convention we ever took friends to. And it was not a big convention. And you know, Dave had an expectation because he's taking, you know, like we've been to New York and Chicago and we've been to France and Australia and we take these, our friends to this comic book convention and the hotel, God love them. They were lovely, lovely people, but the hotel had like a pool inside the hotel, like, but well, it was like a courtyard the around room, the pool bucket in the bathroom on the, yeah, their bathroom the, had a bucket where the, the tub was like literally dripping into it, the bucket. It wasn't the tub. It was the, it was dripping the from the ceiling. Oh gosh. It was bad. It was bad hotel. Like, I'm sorry. It was bad. I thought, yeah, they're never going to go anywhere with this again. And so we literally, we went for dinner. We're like, let's go have dinner. And while we were after dinner, we thought Dave was looking for Starbucks he checked us. He he drove us all to a Hilton, checked us into the Hilton, and then we snuck back to the other hotel because it actually had like it was more like a motel because you could exit the hotel from your bedroom too. Like you could add, go into the courtyard part, which was enclosed and felt more a little bit like a cave, or you could leave through your door, which also was I never like an open door to the world in a hotel room. So we snuck out and we were giggling like kids. It was so much fun. Probably not a fun story because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm not doing it justice, but honest to goodness, we just laughed that whole time. Well, uh, the funniest part for me was uh, when we were leaving, Gary Busey was in the back and uh, he was smoking a cigar and my buddy was waiting for, for us to go. And Gary Busey started talking to him. And next thing you know, they're like, you know, best buddies. And Gary was, you know, telling him his whole life story. It was, it was very funny. I mean, he's, he's a very entertaining guy. And uh, yeah, it was, that was, that was nice. You know, I mean, everybody loves Gary Busey. How can you not? And it's not many conventions. A lot of conventions are the bigger ones nowadays, for sure. Uh, I don't really see the celebrity guests. Uh, I would say um, uh, Australia is a real exception. Because we're there for a week and we all kind of do the same events. Like we'll go to the zoo and do different things. And so you see, uh, like the last one, um, Umbrella Academy, um, <coughs> the big guy, the, he had like the grill arms. He was there. He was very nice. Uh, the guy from um, uh, Gotham Central. The Anyway, uh, the Joker was, oh, the Riddler was there also very nice and so we you know got to know him a little bit that's always great uh yeah but for the most part you know it's not like the old days when uh everybody used to kind of hang out a little bit more nowadays it's you have the comic side actually the last i was in calgary and we uh, got a car into the convention center we came in the back and uh they let us in you weren't there for this meredith and 
the people figured, okay, because we came in in a car, we must be celebrity guests. So, and so we got brought to the celebrity section. I'm like, what is going on? Cause I, I didn't know what was happening. All I knew was that there was a, uh, a catering table. And I mean, you know what the celebrity one looks like, right? And so yeah. the comic one, there's, there's coffee and you make your own. It's like a Keurig, you put the thing in anyway, and it, which is fine. And there might be some like Halloween style candy. bags of candy right. on the table. Well, yeah, if you're lucky, you know, cold cuts and the whole works. And I'm like, whoa, cold cuts. <laughs> I've been there where they've had like practically a full on roast beef being right. catered and served. Yep. Anyway, it was amazing. And I thought, wow, they're going all out. This is crazy. And then they, they wanted, you know, who are you? They put me up on a whiteboard. There you go. And uh, then they realized you didn't belong there. One of these things is not like the others. And one they of these said, things just don't belong. I said, yeah, I'm a comic guest. And everybody kind of stopped. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's what happened. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah the room goes silent i mean they were still totally nice it's not like they're you know, get out of here you bum but they showed you the door <laughs> <laughs> they did do that <laughs> oh i think you're in the wrong place yeah there seems to have been a mistake marvin duran has a super chat for 50 mexican pesos marvin says i'm curious about your thoughts on kirby dave and also, before you answer that, Allison McGlone says, I'm still here, Meredith, stupid tired, but I'm holding out. <laughs> Everybody's dying, Dave. It's not even, the, it's only 9.30. We're all well, dying. Because of yes. the time change. Um, Kirby, yeah. Well, okay. My honest thoughts on, on Jack Kirby, he is, um, could you say he's the greatest innovator in the history of comics? I, I think there's a very strong... It, Argument to be made for that. Uh, if you look at illustration before that, I'm a huge fan, and actually that's going to have to be the book of the week at some point soon, of uh, Hal Foster, Prince Valiant, uh, a lot of the older stuff. It's it's much more, I mean, it's, it's beautiful work, but nothing really projects out at the viewer in the way that um, Jack Kirby did. Nobody, I don't know, and I mean, you know, look, I, I could certainly be wrong, but I don't know of anybody that really did anything like that before Jack Kirby. And that's what really made comics, you know, the exciting, punchy medium that they are. And it's something, you know, that I, I think American comics, you know, really uh, brought to the table. And you see that with, you know, with manga, you see that, like, it's been picked up everywhere. I mean, we've picked up so much from from manga in American comics. And I think that, you know, that kind of sense of dy dynamism, they, they picked up uh from from american stuff but yeah i i think um and also i mean uh, an incredible designer uh responsible really for designing you know half at the very least maybe even three quarters of the marvel universe uh i i will say he passed away in 93 i broke in in 94 and i never got a chance to meet him and it's something that I, I really regret. And when he died, now I never got to meet him. So um, I can't say exactly, but the way things are now, you know, Stan Lee um, for several years before he passed away, uh, he, he was an incredible, huge, huge draw at conventions. I mean, people were so excited just to, to see, see him and be in the same room um, of somebody that was responsible for, you know, um, I, my opinion, you know, the, the greatest pop culture um, phenomenon in in the world. And, uh, you know, Jack Kirby, I, I think, plays, you know, an equal part in that. And I don't know that that level of appreciation was there then. I mean, I know he was heavily and, and very respected, but not to the extent. It, it, I remember when I got in, there were artists from, you know, the 80s and the 70s that had kind of, you know, stylistically, the image was the big thing at the time. And this is the brutal thing about about comics and, and really entertainment in general is, you know, what you do can fall out of fashion. And then you kind of have the choice. Do you want to alter everything that you do and you believe in artistically to try and stay relevant? Or do you want to do what you do? And you, you can kind of fade. And some of those artists that had faded that were huge um, a decade earlier would be at conventions and there would just be nobody in front of them, would just be a no interest. Uh, everybody just wanted to see what was new. And 
Uh, it was like that for a long, long time. And it's really been the last several years since the movies and, um, and more of a, I think, a respect for the medium that uh, I've seen older artists just have, you know, the biggest lines and the most interest at conventions. And it's, it's really been uh, great to see. And I don't think Jack Kirby got to appreciate that and got to experience that in the way that I think he deserved. Hmm. All right. Uh, next super chat comes from Brad Scott Art for $10. Brad says, Miss Meredith, in the fall, you get an extra hour of sleep. You should be good to go. The summer is when you lose an hour, but that's okay. You still rock. And Dave is the bomb. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brad. I have to get up. The horses don't recognize time change. So I didn't get that extra hour of sleep because... They still had to be fed at the same time, even though I've been slowly transitioning them. Yeah. Yeah. Sun goes down. They're like, why aren't you out here? Sun comes up. Why aren't you out here? So. Yeah. And then get pretty. Um, also, I work hard all day. I should be tired. Building stalls, farming the farm, doing the stuff. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing great about Farming Simulator. So, you know, you have a tractor and they have You're all these You're not tired afterward? Things. That's right. They have all these things that attach to the back, you know, like a harrow and whatever. Anyway, uh, in real life, man, those things are a hassle to change. We're getting good game, at it, though. you just hit X. Yeah, we're getting better. We're getting better. Johnny D Gaming has a super chat for $5. Johnny D says, darn it, I'm yawning for real. That's what I get for trolling Meredith. I'm so tired, but I want to keep trying. I'm getting there. Are you sure? I'm sure, sure you're getting there? Anthony G has a super chat for $4.99. Anthony says, if the Finches come to Emerald City Comic Con in Seattle next month, I'll buy you both a steak dinner at the Met. Since Meredith likes a fancy dinner. <laughs> Seattle? Yeah. Anthony, you're on. We're not going to Emerald City Comic Con next month. Oh, not next month, but, you know, next, next year. Next year, baby. We could do it next year. And Kella Serena says, Meredith, the tires due to the time change, but mostly because her 19-month-old has been sick the last two weeks and has had trouble sleeping through the night. That sucks. Mm, yeah. When the kids aren't sleeping, nobody's sleeping. Yeah, nobody's happy. Nobody's happy. Our kids, they can be a hassle. But I definitely... I don't know, know if he's not sleeping through the night because I go to bed before he does now. You know what? It's easy to miss a baby. I miss a baby sometimes. And I will enjoy them 10 years from now when the kids have kids. 10 years from now, 10 years from now, well, maybe less because Everett's 18, maybe, well, seven, maybe eight. Let's go. Not eight. today anyway, but not today, not today or anytime soon. <coughs> That's what's important here. <coughs> ETA. Um, 10 minutes. Okay. Everybody's offering to buy us dinner. Alpin yeah. says, I'll buy you steak dinners if you come to the Bay Area in California. I've only ever been to San Francisco one time. I, I would love to go again. Mm. It's been ages I haven't been. Now, I know the Bay Area is not just San Francisco. It's Oakland and what, Palo Alto and all of it. But yeah. It's one thing, that I, you know, I, I'm going to say my favorite thing about this whole YouTube thing is uh, I'm not the most... I don't want to say I'm not friendly. I'm friendly, you know. I just don't have a lot of friends. Like I'm not really a very open kind of person, and it's put me out there a lot more. And I feel like I I know so many more people, and uh, yeah, I really value it. You got a flair, a flock. Sounds corny, I know. Oh, you're done? No. No, but right. we're getting there. Then I will read this next super chat from Jim Klein for $5. Jim says, Dave, 
Any chance you could do a tutorial or share tips on drawing characters in bulkier power army? Think same as from Met Metroid or early Ultimate Iron Man. You could do a tutorial on that. Um, okay, so a tutorial on bulky characters, bulky power armor. I spelled it wrong. Okay. I will look into that. That reminds me. Um, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the uh, perspective video, the thumbnail perspective is spelled wrong. Uh, and I had no idea until I saw somebody commented that. And I thought, oh, yeah, it is. But the video is doing pretty well, so I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> so it's just going to be spelled wrong forever. Now I'm thinking maybe the video is doing, you know, pretty well because because it's spelled wrong. People are like, who is this moron that's both spelled his, uh, his video wrong? What's that about? I feel like I should say for the after you said I don't have a lot of friends, do you have a lot of friends? But you just don't get together with friends a lot. And now you get together with all of your Finch flock friends every Monday. Yeah. The Finch flock friend. Okay, stop. Well, now I'm in like drunk, tired, mare to the zone. We're almost done. You just never know what might come out of my mouth at this point. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Madhavan Na Nagesh says, come to India. Oh, there's another bucket list one for me. Mm -hmm. I uh, There was talk about maybe being able to go to India uh, several years ago, and it didn't pan out. And one day, oh, I would love to just, I mean, it's such a different place. And, you know, that's what like going to Japan is so different than here and India is so different. Russia is is very different. And you know, I, I've been in so many places now. Um, I know for me, so bucket list, Scotland, because I'm partly Scottish, and I've never been I've been to England, I'm partly English, Ireland, because I'm partly Irish. And uh, so yeah, I've, I've never been to Ireland, that would be nice. And then um, I managed to go to Singapore. That was amazing. Japan. I've, you want to go to Japan? I've been to China. It was very cool. But I've never been to Japan. Uh, I've never been to India. Yeah. You're into the Philippines. I would go to Wales. Wales is like a part of that. South Africa. Um, yeah. I was talking about going there and there was an offer. And unfortunately, with everything changing, you know, right now, um, hopefully that kind of stuff will happen again. You would we'll get go back to it eventually. Oh, yeah. These days. I have to train someone how to take care of the horses. I went to Dubai. Remember that? That was very cool. Yeah, places that really, I mean, you just go and, and there's just a different atmosphere. It's just, it's so different. It's, uh, it's very cool. Um, Brazil was incredible. You were there. You went to Brazil with me. Yeah, I've been a lot of places that with was you. Great. Brazil was an incredible convention. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah. I mean, and a lot of people that I don't really see as often, you know, which was really nice. And actually, I got to meet Ariel Olivetti there. Well, there you go. <clears throat> All right. That's it. You're done. Uh, I still have to do a background. Oh. I'm going to do trees. I don't have anything. I can, right. I'm going to be. I done. don't have anything. I Everybody can. Everybody wants to go to bed. I don't have <laughs> anything I can throw at you. <laughs> we'll just be done. I'll uh, go with no background for this one. I think it'll work. I don't want mutiny. No. All right. So that's it. And she's got. It, oh. So Antoine funny. Washington has a super chat for dollar ninety nine. Antoine wants to know who will you draw next week. Uh, you know I that is. I know what I suggested. Okay. I suggested next week you go back to the big piece. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, okay, so you know what? Actually, let me just throw this out there right now. Uh, Isaac, our youngest, wants me to draw Spider Man as the first Avenger for What If. Now, 
I have to be honest, I don't know if that's an actual what if or he's made that up, but that's what he wants me to do. So he wants me to do Spider-Man with Captain America shield and, you know, some of the like Avengers things and, and do that. What do you guys think about that? And then the other one is the uh, the huge jam piece, and I'd like to add some stuff to that, that. He started last year that he still has. Yes. So, yeah, <clears throat> draw your suggestion if you <clears throat> would like to see one of the or the other of those next. People are given suggestions, but they're not one of those two. What are the suggestions? Pitt. Ooh. Hal Jordan. Hey, hang on. Ripclaw. Oh, yeah. Rip Raven. Claw. Oh, people like Cap Spidey, so let's get in the vote. Okay, so I'll do that. And I actually would really love to do Pit, and I would really love to do Ripclaw. So I think those are both really great choices. There is an artist that would be great to be able to get on the stream at some point. Who? The Okio one. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. He's such a huge influence for me. All right. All right. That's it. That's it. Meredith gets to go to bed. There. Woo. Woo. You guys all get to go to bed. Go yeah. to bed, Allison. I'm going to bed. I'm not going to stay Dave's up this going time. going to bed. I'm tired. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, so much. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Um, it was too long coming. I, I'm surprised it took so long to do Psylocke. And it's been too long since I've done a female character, too. I need to do that a little bit more. So, yeah, everyone have a, a great week and, uh, you know, good luck adjusting with Daylight Savings Time. And hopefully we will see you guys next week or uh, what if Spider-Man as a first Avenger should be a lot of fun. All right. Bye. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>